Well, hello Phil. Here we are again, Lytham Hall. Uh, it's been a while since we did one of these videos and I know you did a fabulous one for Halloween recently that was such a success by the way, despite having two inches of rain. But the beauty really is to actually have the privilege of just sitting here in the sunshine in November. And it's November and it's a warm summer's day almost. But of course that's the beauty of the microclimate we call Lytham Hall, the place that we all love. And is it any wonder we're getting more and more visitors? So I thought perhaps today we'd just look at one or two things that we're doing and particularly things that we're doing with the community. One of those of course, and those of you I know that bought last year's calendar will no doubt be waiting for this year's and the friends of Lytham Hall as usual have actually sponsored the calendar this year and so it's in print, it's in, on sale at the moment in the shop at Lytham Hall here so you can come and get one. You can also contact the friends and they can organise one for you as well. Uh, the price is £8 each or £15 for two. A lot of people like to buy one for themselves and perhaps pass one on to a, a friend or a relative maybe as I have in, in, in Sydney, Australia. And talking about Sydney, Australia, you know, um, I actually had a, a little message I sent my daughter. She was having a wonderful weekend in Sydney and talking about the weather. And I said, well, I'm going to Lytham Hall later on. I bet you it's nearly as warm. And actually, it is. It's, it's beautiful. And this calendar almost demonstrates it. Here I am. Here's November. The fabulous autumn colour of the beach. And the autumn colour here over the last few weeks has been exceptional. We've had people coming from all over to see it because it is that good. And we'll look at things like the lily pond development later and where we're planting Japanese maples. I just want to mention one last thing actually about the calendar. Here we are for May 2022. I don't want to give too many secrets away, but some of you might remember we ran a competition and it was open to everybody and we're going to run another competition and this was the this was Luke who won the competition for the bluebells and it was a fabulous shot and that's why it's in here and of course what we want to do is run one each year but it won't be for the, for bluebells next time so just a little word anybody interested this year it's going to be wait for it it's going to be for the snowdrops my favorite flower of the whole lot it tells you whatever the winter's been springs on its way so that's really the calendar but also whilst the weather's this nice it's nice to take advantage of that warmth and something I want to show you in a minute talk about visitors coming like bees to a honeypot I want to show you something magnificent I want to show you nature in action and you might say common sense at work and we're going to go and have a look at this beech tree, which is sadly, slowly but surely dying away. But I want you to see what's happening on there. It's stunning. Well, you know about my love of nature and uh, the point about nature, of course, is it teaches you so much. And it doesn't matter how old you are, how late you came to study nature, how much you think you know already, you know nothing. I know nothing but I know a little bit more today. I know that on this beech tree, which has got the sun shining straight at me, straight into my eyes, I can feel that enormous warmth, that radiation, the energy. It's warming the tree up and all these little dots running about, here we are, look. They're crawling all over me. There's one on my watch. These are ladybirds. Now, why are they here? Well, two reasons. Every animal needs to eat to produce energy. These little chaps sitting here and they're flying in. It's just unbelievable. Somebody, there must be a, a Facebook page somewhere bringing them in. Every single one I can see is warming itself on here, absorbing that energy. And just think about it. If you're absorbing energy, you don't need to eat. If you don't need to eat, 
you can stay here and you can live longer and you can prepare for tonight if it's cold and it could well be a bit chilly. So that's what the ladybirds are doing. They're warming up. They're thinking about hibernation, but at the moment they're actually getting the last piece of food they can manage. They're hunting, they're looking for things, but they're not using that much energy. So they don't have to fly, they don't have to eat. So instead of thousands of calories, they're only going to use hundreds today. So it's a lovely bonus, but that's nature. It's the balance which always amazes me. And it's not just ladybirds. Here's a fly. They're all doing the same thing. The more they fly, the more energy they're using. But the beauty of these is that they don't need the energy. It's almost like a recharge. They're plugging themselves into the electricity and charging their banks. And that is what nature does. A, it surprises you, and B, it's done it all before. It's done it for millions of years, and when we are all disappeared, and the trees have disappeared, it'll carry on doing the same. It's probably time I finish, because this little ladybird down here is just having a slight nibble. Thank you. As you know, and people that have seen these videos before, you do know that I have a slight passion for trees. Uh, always have, always will. When I was at Myersco, I was always known as the, the tree man. And one of my first jobs was actually doing the plans and organizing all the plants when we were building Myersco in 1969, 70, 71 and onwards. And somehow, how could I possibly want anything more than to be at a place like Lytham Hall? where I know you all enjoy yourselves coming here, but I'm thinking, particularly at my age now, I'm thinking about the future, and I'm thinking, shouldn't we be planting more trees? Not specifically just because of the global warming issues, but because this place is magnificent. It's spent a long, long time not being very well maintained, and it's time perhaps that we moved on with a plan. People have asked me a lot, could we have a bench in memoriam or could we celebrate the birth of our grandson? And I've always tried to find something for them. The beauty, of course, is that trees often speak louder than anything and harking back to nature, what could be nicer than actually donating a tree into a proper plan and actually having that dedication recorded for your loved one or maybe for your dog or maybe if you're celebrating your wedding anniversary, who knows? It's a way of putting something into nature and then coming here and quietly observing. And so that's what we're doing. So we're starting a tree planting scheme. There'll be details on the websites very soon. Um, but basically it means that you can dedicate a tree, a specimen tree, anything this size, larger some of them, or possibly some very ornamental shrubs, and we'll talk about the uh, Japanese maples in a moment. But things like that, and one or two rhododendrons that will be the species one, which will celebrate our collector, Charles Marys, who was linked with the Cliftons of Lytham Hall all the way back in the Victorian era. So we're planting, we've started it by the way. I've had so many phone calls saying, could I plant a tree 
as a memorial or whatever and can we help and organisations have done the same and we've started these two there are actually a pair here we're planting right the way up this north prospect which was the family entrance at the north entrance there it was the one they would have seen and this is a beautiful euonymus tree not a little shrub not an evergreen it's a deciduous euonymus tree and the big feature of this is its autumn colour which is past now but you'll be able to come and see it next year and the whole of this avenue will celebrate mainly the sort of almost the Japanese ethos of life beginning in the spring life never being continuous but always being cyclical and then the idea of going through into the autumn the leaves falling and the cycle of nature which the other day to be honest when we were watching the autumn colour the leaves were falling like snow it was just unbelievable and to hear leaves hit the ground how often do you actually stop long enough to hear that I can assure you it's quite a moving experience. So we're planting this for just that reason. We're enhancing the place, we're improving it, and we're celebrating, particularly with the lily pond here, we're celebrating what people did in the past, and we're trying our best to not necessarily restore it exactly as it was, but work with the spirit. One area I was particularly involved with, apart from just the trees, I was always a fanatic about Japanese gardens, I've always had something about that. And it's amazing to discover some of the evidence about the Japanese influence of the lily pond here at Lytham Hall. Well, it's amazing what you find behind a tree. And what we've got down here, of course, is the lily pond. Everybody knows this as the lily pond and the interesting thing is that this used to be a pond where they used to wash the horses and various things this was a circular pond in the middle of a field in the early 1800s but now and in the late 1800s it became developed as a most beautiful garden we call it the lily pond and some of you will know there's a boathouse ruin on here You'll probably also know that there's an island that was created when they extended the pond into some of the Georgian water features which are now defunct. And the beauty of it is, through having a little look without any destructive archaeology, just exploring the edges and looking, we've been able to uncover the most magnificent and amazing things. Things that I never thought I would actually see, even though I've always had a thought this has got a Japanese feel to it. Many years ago, um, a lady in her 90s sent us a wonderful letter. And it said, when I was a young girl, I lived at Lytham Hall. My family lived there. They, they were trawler owners from Fleetwood. And my favourite place of all was going down to the lily pond, playing on the beautiful Japanese bridge and enjoying the azaleas and the gorgeous scent that they gave. And that almost brought tears to my eyes because I'd been doing a lot of research on the lily pond and I had never heard the story. In fact, I'd even sat just at the area behind there and looked down the lily pond towards the boathouse and drawn the precise place where what they call the 77 log bridge would have been had this been designed as an authentic Japanese garden and believe me the next day on speaking to somebody in the office they showed me a photograph with all the ice on the lily pond and said look at this boathouse it's all intact but my eyes went to the right and yes there was a beautiful absolutely beautiful Japanese bridge on the right of the island down there. We've now found the foundations of that bridge and work is going on to actually make sure we know exactly who put it in, when and so on. In the meantime, out of respect in so many ways, we're planting Japanese maples. 
and we're planting other Japanese trees and I'm standing in the middle and here this is probably the best of the lot, still autumn colour to come. Um, this whole area was basically donated by a bequest from Jean Wilding Walsh, who was one of the vice presidents of the Friends of Lytham Hall. And in her memory, um, we planted these early this year. Everybody said, well, they're a little bit green and spindly. Will they take many, many years before they look good? And I said, just wait till the autumn. And here we are, possibly two days too late to see them all in fabulous autumn colour. But nevertheless, you've seen a hint of that autumn colour. And this, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the most exciting discoveries that some distance away from the hall. And we will talk about the South Prospect at a later date. And the ducks are telling me they are enjoying it too. Well, Phil, here we are again. Um, one of my favourite places of all time, of course, the South Prospect Garden. Absolutely spectacular. The trees, the weather. We couldn't have possibly asked for better weather than this. And, of course, earlier on I was talking about the weather being so warm and the, all the ladybirds about and the heat and the unseasonably warm conditions. And you might have noticed, but here we've got a little friend here, an extra volunteer at Lytham Hall at the moment, um, little master John Talbot Tiggywinkle. And what a shame in a way that I have to actually pick him up in the wild. And what a shame that he's out at this time of the year. But let me just say two things about that. First of all, it is very mild and there's a lot of food about. But secondly, he's obviously very young, he's a baby. And it would be wrong to risk one of our hedgehogs, and we do have a lot, um, when we know that we have qualified people who run the hedgehog rescue locally, who always say, if you find one such and such a size, do let us know. That's the least we can do. So, because we do know quite a bit, Master Tiggywinkle here is just having a little sit on my knee until we go down and, and phone the rescue people to pick him up. Now, I mentioned that we're in the South Prospect and we've got the statue of Diana there, somewhat older than I am, but I sometimes wonder. And uh, of course, we've got the magnificent hall, but this area is the South Prospect and you will have heard there's a lot of developments going to be happening here We've been planting, obviously, for years, and we've been developing it. The volunteers have been out here working very hard. Um, we've redeveloped this centre rose bed, for instance. And we're also planting shelter belts and interest belts on the edge on the east side there. And there's all sorts of things going to happen. You might have noticed a little in the press. I won't steal anybody's thunder, but just to say, please watch this space because Lytham Hall is really, really on the road. And you saw Wonder Hall happen and probably thought that's pretty magnificent. As we keep saying, there's plenty more to come. And here we are, Lytham Hall, fabulous as always. Who wouldn't be a volunteer here? Who wouldn't want to visit? Thank you very, very much. Look after yourselves and see you soon.